Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I make my thumbnails and also how I overlay like emojis and products on top of my thumbnails. I have gotten some questions on how I make my thumbnails, so I figured I'll just make a short video for you guys. It's pretty simple. I hope you guys can follow along. I tried to make it as easy as possible. So first things first, after I import the footage, I go to the video where I take my thumbnails. I take my thumbnails in just a video clip after I'm done filming, just because it's easier just to keep the camera rolling and I could just change poses and stuff like that. I don't have to keep like going to my camera to set the timer and take the photo. So after I kind of roll through, I kind of always pose a bunch for a couple of minutes just to make sure that there are some options that I like. I'm going to be taking screenshots of different parts of the video. So if you have a MacBook, it is very easy to take a screenshot. You're going to hold shift, command, and four, and you're going to be able to drag the area where you want the screenshot. So I'm just gonna go through the rest of this clip. I'm gonna take a bunch of screenshots. Like I said, I just like to have options. I like to have different poses, the products in different positions, and then I will go through and decide which one works best for me. And even if I'm kind of iffy about a clip, I'll still go ahead and screenshot it just because when you're going through clips, I only pose for a couple seconds and sometimes it's hard to go back and find that pose if you guys know what I mean. So now we're gonna be going ahead and opening up the editing program that I use, and that is Be Funky. I will have that directly linked down below for you guys. I I used to use PicMonkey, but now some of their features that I used to use are premium that I need to have a monthly subscription for. So I find that BeFunky works so great, free, a lot of the premium features I don't find myself really needing at all. So here I'm just going to go ahead and look through the screenshots, but I find that the preview is a little too tiny, so I will just open them all up on my desktop as you guys are going to see me doing here and put them all side by side and kind of compare and do like a process of elimination if you guys know what I mean. Also something that I like to keep in mind when I am picking a thumbnail is how I looked in my last thumbnail and how I also looked in my last few thumbnails. Just personally for me and my channel, I like to switch it up. I like each thumbnail to look a little bit unique, so I'll switch up the face I'm making, whether it's a smiley face or a kissy face or a serious face, or I'll switch up the side of the thumbnail I'm on, my position and stuff like that. Just because I don't like when my thumbnails start to look too identical, I like to switch it up a little bit. So now something that is really important is that a thumbnail size is 1280 by 720. So when I go into Be Funky, I always click resize, the width is 1280, and the height is 720. I When I first started YouTube, I was always struggling with black bars. I kept trying to crop my picture so that it would fit perfectly without any of those black bars. So after a little bit of research, I found that the thumbnail should be 1280 by 720. So I just resize my pictures and it fits absolutely perfect. But just make sure that you do this before you add any font or overlays because if you do it after it will kind of throw off the proportion of the font and stuff like that on top of your photo and also this resizing method isn't something that I've tried with like an iPhone selfie but it does work really well with the footage from my Canon T6i and also if you're making like a thumbnail that has a collage or something like that just resize your grid to 1280 by 720 and it'll work the same exact way and the next step that I take when I'm creating my thumbnails is I like to mess with the exposure a little bit. I like to up the highlight, the contrast, as well as the brighten. I do work with only a ring light as well as natural light. I don't have like a consistent steady bright light. So I feel like sometimes the natural light can be a little bit dull or the ring light can tend to just wash me out a little bit. So I like to brighten my thumbnails. I also do brighten and color correct my videos. So as you guys can see the difference of the original and then the edited one, it's just a lot more bright. It's a lot more just like of a pop a little bit more eye-catching. And next I will go into color and I will put the temperature down a little bit just because I do like a little bit more of a coolness to my thumbnails. I don't like my thumbnails to look really warm or orange so I usually put the temperature down six but I find that that can make me look a little pale and wash out the true colors of my makeup so then I will up the saturation six as well. So it gives it a little bit more of a cool tone vibe but brings the color back into my face and my makeup and then I will also put the sharpness up five or six just to kind of clarify everything everything and make my makeup and the products look nice and sharp. So this next step now we're going to go into touch up and this is something that I've been doing only recently but I feel like it makes the world of a difference and really making my thumbnails pop. I know I've been saying that a lot but I just feel like it makes everything look really cohesive and put together. So I'm going to go into the paintbrush and be funky and I'm going to do like a 35% opacity and the biggest brush there is and I'm going to paint over the whole entire picture and now I'm going to be erasing myself and the product. So basically anything that you really want to stand out on your thumbnail 
thumbnail pop, like I've said a million times, you're going to want to erase this part so you're not covered in the white lay of the paint. So you guys might think that this is a little bit weird, but the reason that I do this is one to brighten the background because if I brighten myself so much to where the background is as bright as I wanted, I'm going to look very bright and washed out. So I like to brighten myself first and then I do this to brighten the background. I also like to do this so the background looks a little bit less cluttered so you can't see all my frames and the makeup behind me just so it looks a little bit more plain in the background. And as you guys just saw, I was just upping the opacity a little bit so I could see if there were any spots that I had to fill in or erase. So here, like you see, I'm just playing with the opacity just to see how bright I want the background. And like I said a million times, this is also gonna make you stand out. So there's the background before and after, just a little bit brighter and just a little tip that I've been using. So now I'm gonna be applying the text to my thumbnail. I don't like a lot of text on my thumbnails, so this whole video was called Makeup Empties, Would I Repurchase, Skincare Makeup. I used to feel like I had to cram the whole title onto the thumbnail, but you don't have to. So for such a long title, Empties just does the trick. It tells people straight up what your video is going to be about and your thumbnail doesn't look crammed. I know some people don't like putting writing on their thumbnails, but as a smaller YouTuber, I just feel like it is important because for me personally, when I look at my subscription box, the writing on the thumbnail catches me before the actual title of the video and if videos don't have writing on the thumbnail I feel like I tend to skip over them so here I'm also going to be laying down a black version of the word first and then I'm going to be overlaying a white on top just because my background is white the white will look a little bit too flat and almost disappear if you don't put the black underneath to make it look a little bit more 3d and to pop off the thumbnail I know I keep saying that but to me thumbnails are just so important if you want your videos to get views and seen your thumbnail just has to be kind of eye grabbing and it wants you want it to make someone want to watch your video if that makes any sense so for this particular video this is where I left the thumbnail I didn't want anything too crazy I just wanted it nice and simple but I do want to show you guys how to add overlays on top of your video like an emoji or a makeup product or something like that so this is the hard eyes emoji really simple just put it into Google you guys see this background that I'm showing you the white and gray checkers that means that the photo does not have a background that the background is transparent so I just saved that and then I'm uploading it into graphics if you guys can't find the hard eyes emoji like with that transparent background try typing in heart eyes emoji transparent or whatever you're looking for with a transparent background and it should come up in a google search just make sure it has that checkered background which means like i said it has no background so from there, I kind of just play around with angles, placement. You guys know it's really personal preference, whatever you guys want to do creatively. But now going into actual makeup products, this is a little bit harder to find with a ready transparent background. So we're actually going to put this into a website that's going to take away the background. So here's the Matte and Poreless Foundation by Maybelline. Again, just saving it under a really simple name in a really simple location that I could find it easily. And we're going to be going to lunapick.com. I found this really simply by just googling make a background transparent on a picture so I'm going to be uploading the file into this website and they have a tool that basically makes backgrounds transparent so here's the photo we're going to be going to edit transparent background and you're just going to be clicking the color that you want to make transparent so this is why it gets a little bit tricky because this has the white background but it also has the white inside of the bottle kind of that kind of represents the glass so you can definitely mess with the level of transparency this feature is a little bit tricky if you have white products because it is going to get rid of the product but if you just lower the transparency threshold it should fix it so as you guys can see this is the high transparency threshold and then when I lower it it's going to fill in in that area again. So once it's how I like it, I just save it as always to my desktop and I'm gonna be uploading it as a graphic again, the same exact way we did to the emoji onto my Be Funky image. Like I said, this can be a little bit tricky with products with a white cap, a white bottle, a reflection that looks white in it. So you guys just have to play around with the threshold. Some products are just impossible to get to look good with that feature, but I have to say I have made it work with most products. So I'm just gonna be placing this onto the image. Again, just playing around with placement. I like to mix things up kind of switch things back and forth change the angles whatever I like whatever looks fun and here one more time I'm just gonna show you guys the process again I'm gonna stop talking so you guys can just like pay attention and watch but I'm just gonna do the same exact thing make the background transparent and upload it as a graphic onto my image The cat 
And usually the last step that I take is just kind of looking over everything, see if anything needs to be touched up, more highlight, more contrast, more sharpness, if I want to change the sizes of the graphics or move them around or anything like that. And then I'm going to save it. Sometimes I like to save my thumbnails in steps just in case my computer crashes or something like that. But as you guys can see, here are the three stages of the thumbnails and the different options of thumbnails or the original, the one with just the writing, and then the one with all the graphics. So from here, once I've created a thumbnail that I'm happy with, I'm going to go to the video, edit the video, put the thumbnail in, or change the thumbnail. I already have the thumbnail that I like for this video, but I just figured I'd use it as an example to show you guys. But if you are a YouTuber, that is how you change the thumbnail after you've uploaded it, if you guys didn't know. So that is going to complete this video on how I make my thumbnails. I really hope that you guys enjoyed and found it helpful. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you guys subscribe before you leave because I'd love to have you guys here. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and of course I will see you in my next one.